Welcome into the latest draft show presented by Seneca Resorts and Casinos. As promised, Marty and I have welcomed in Sabres Director of Amateur Scouting, Jerry Fortin. Jerry, I don't know if there is an actual timeline that you can put on this question, but when does the work begin on each draft class for you? Oh, it, I, I mean, it's cliche, but it, it, after the day after the draft, the, the year before, honestly. And, I'll give Jason Nightingale credit. He always says to me, literally right after the draft ends, I can't wait to get working on the next group of guys. I get excited about the next group of prospects. So that's kind of the mindset you get in over the years, I, I guess. And, and he's got a healthy attitude about that. I want to exhale a little bit more <laughs> after the draft, but you do, it, it, you know, maybe not necessarily the next day, but you know, you got the summer showcase, you got the Halinka starting shortly thereafter. Um, and, and I think we know players from the underage years better than we've ever known them in the past, too. So when you talk about the underage years, are we talking about you guys have seen them play as 15-year-olds, or is that too young? Is it 16, maybe the sweet years that you, you start keeping track of them? I, I think 16. I think the year when you're starting to see them in the underage year playing against the draft, with and against the draft eligible players. That's when... You know, and even that year, it's fun, in the Holinka even for that matter, how many times at the end of the season are you actually going back and saying, hey, do you remember that game in August or September? Um, it all gets blended in together. It's part of the big picture. You might have learned some lessons about the player. Uh, the progression from the beginning of the year to the end of the year is really important too. Uh, but now if you want to take that back two years, you know, some memories, the big picture stuff, but you're not going to hold too much against a player or give him too much credit for his underage year. When you go year over year, um, if each draft class had like a skill number or something to that effect, like are, do you notice much of a difference year to year, draft class to draft class? And if so, because our audience wants to know, what is this year's draft class like? Yeah, we, we, we do see that a lot in the media. Mm -hmm. And I think it's much more subtle than um, what you hear about publicly. Yes, it's a strong draft. It's definitely an above average draft. We won't know that for sure for many years. Um, and you know, people do like to say a lot of times um, the public and the scouts opinion on whether a class is strong or not is so heavily weighted because of the top five or 10 players in the draft. So if, if if I'm looking at whether a draft is uh, deep or not, or strong, I'm looking at how far down in the first round can you go and still get a really good player. Um, and not so much are the top three elite, and not trying to figure out is it strong in the third or fourth round. Like, can you get to the end of the first? Can you get to the early second? Can you get to the mid second and think, that you're still really confident you're getting a solid NHL player. Over the years, we do see a lot of drop off, at least in the Lennon now, right when you're living through the, at that, you know, 35 to 45 range in the second round. Um, so you talk about the first round and you talk about the, 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 the prospects, the combine has been here in Buffalo the last few years and you get to interview as many as you want. The top 100 prospects come, so how many? Did you guys interview at this year's Combine uh, at Quebec Center? Uh, it was between 75 and 80. Oh, wow. So you're not just looking at the first 30, the top 35. You're looking to cast a wide net on, on those players that come in? Yeah, because I do think some of it is organizational information you want to have yep. you know, for the future, even if you don't draft the player. <laughs> And then I'm the one that goes through, you know, every organization has one person responsible for um, both uh, put, uh, proposing names to go into the database for the combine, but then also who you're going to interview. And it, it gets really hard for me when you're following these players all year <laughs> to not want to interview them as much as it gets exhausting. And, you know, it's, um, you do want to give some players a break too that you know are going to have 25, 30 interviews if you realistically don't think you have any chance of drafting the player. Uh, but it's, it's hard. Yeah, they, they're long days. Um, but you know, I think it's, it's, you can't put too much weight into the information, but there's always something you get out of each interview, I think. 
I didn't interview with the New Jersey Devils my year, but it wasn't because they weren't maybe not going to draft me. They had Marty Brodeur, and my agent was Brodeur's agent, and he was in a fight with Lou Lemoriello over a contract for Marty, so he says, you don't get to interview the other Marty, which I was a pawn in their big game, right? But anyway, it's not about me. Um, off ice, on ice, interview, all of that, you look at a player, what do you focus on more? Is there, is there a part that you like to focus on more? Oh, no, it's, um, that would almost be impossible to do. Um, you know, on ice, and we've talked about this a lot, you know, with the organizational philosophy, and, you know, putting a preference in, in certain areas, you know. Kevin's been great on, on steering us, but then also not interfering yeah. um, too much during the course of the process. You know, but he's obviously, you can see it with our NHL team, I think you've seen it with the um, the prospects we've drafted, like he's he, he, good character people, uh, driven people, competitive people. He uses the word curiosity a lot. Um, you could kind of wrap that all into kind of the intangible um, category. Uh, hockey sense, you know, skating, um, compete, you know, all important to us. Uh, you know, what percentage you value it, what, what areas are you willing to take a risk with certain players. Uh, maybe the off-ice stuff plays into that, you know, depending on how you view the person off-ice. But our area scouts do an amazing job all year long, um, gathering due diligence, uh, painting a picture for us on what the person is like. You know, the, the crossover scouts will get involved with that a little bit, but they, they paint the picture for us, they lay the groundwork, and it's a very, very rare instance when we see something that doesn't line up uh, to what they're telling us. And if that's the case, then we'll dig deeper. But most of the times, the information that they're bringing us is spot on. Tell us about Sam Ventura, the person and the head of his department and what he brings to your group oh. because of his talents. Well, Sam, first of all, a lot of energy, a lot of uh, ambition, a lot of um, anxiousness to help and to make an impact. Um, you know, similar to some things you'd look for in a player, right? Um, and, and then um, his staff, you know, the, the volume of work they can do, the coverage they can give us is critical. Um, they really help us uh, in all rounds, uh, making sure we're not missing anything and challenging us. Uh, and then, you know, steering our area scouts to get, you know, more viewings and coverage. There's not a lot of secrets out there anymore in the hockey world, uh, but there certainly are cases mid-year, three quarters of the way through the year, where we have to re redirect some of our resources. Have you enjoyed that aspect being added to scouting? Because you've always shown to love this game so much that you can get excited talking about any aspect of the game. Do you love scouting even more now because you have this extra information if you will. absolutely like it's you know we're sitting on a ton of information all the time and the more information you're sitting on the more people involved the more sure you can be of uh, your final decision and uh, it challenges you more and and there's the nice thing that I have seen evolve um, in the past three or four years is pretty much universally across the league and certainly within our staff of people getting away from like the archaic thinking um, and, and the old school mentality and, and challenging new information. So I haven't seen that at all in our staff and that's exciting. And the fact that you're blending all of this together is, um, you know, it's, it's part of the fun. You know, Kevin talks about that too. Like it's a, it's a really fun process uh, to go through the draft. Is there? an organizational approach, you know, regarding positional needs when you, when you come into a draft? I would say 99% no. Uh, we, we almost never talk about that, and to the contrary, uh, we almost always make a point of saying, don't do that. Um, you make a mistake, and, and you know, Kevin Devine would tell you this for sure over the years, if you start letting that leak into your head too much, you're gonna force a view of a player that probably isn't the accurate view of the player. Um, and you might make a mistake. Now, is it in people's heads sometimes? You know, 
okay, we've, we haven't drafted as many D as forwards. We've taken more D at the top of the draft. Can some of that be in your head as a scout for sure? Um, you know, we're bouncing that off of, uh, uh, you know, Kevin all the time. You know, should we be waiting this a little bit more? And almost always the answer is, is no, but we talk about it. Um, I do this thing on the show that is this or that, like a either or, right? So, um, great shot or great skater, this or that, which one do you prefer? Oh, boy, that is, that is really tough because um, we've drafted some players recently that have both, I think, yeah. and that's really exciting. Uh, I'm going to go great skater because I think when you're a great skater, um, it's, it's very hard to get to be a great skater as you go through your NHL career if you weren't a great skater to start. But I have seen guys drastically improve their shots okay. over the years. I don't see them drastically improve their skating that much. So give me the great skater and I'm going to assume he's going to make the shot better. <laughs> he's going to get closer to the net and yeah. take a better shot. Playmaker or goal scorer? Oh. Hey, tough ones. I, I'm going to go playmaker on that. For, you know, almost, hockey IQ. Hockey IQ, and again, you know, um, so many times it, those guys do have the, the fallback game where they can score and finish when they want to. They're almost electing to be pass first guys, uh, um, but, and and it 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 tends to be an indication of hockey sense. And my last one. And you don't look at my notes, okay. you know, don't backhand toe drag over here. I'm the one that's cheating. Um, goalies, are they weird or normal? Be careful what you say. Goalies, weird or normal? This or that? Oh, they're definitely... Not normal. Weird. <laughs> definitely weird. And hopefully most cases in a good way, because they bring, you know, a certain level of, you know, character and entertainment to your locker room. Every once in a while, they're weird where it's negative, but I could say that about any position, I guess. Like my, my challenge would be define normal, wow. and, then, and then we would go from there. But since we're talking about scouting and maybe advanced scouting, beyond hockey, what are you scouting out in Nashville? Would it be a great restaurant, a uh, new artist, or a uh, new, like a, a concert that you absolutely uh, are going to try to squeeze in somewhere along Well, the way. I don't know if I'm going to have much time for it at all, but you know I'm a sucker for like music and, um, you know, about the only thing I really enjoy these days or have time for are my kids. And if I can catch live music in like an informal setting, any chance I get, like I, I love that. Like that, that would might be the most relaxing thing to me in the world. Just a really informal, casual music setting. Players do video where they rewatch their games and you know, um, do you rewatch the draft a few days later and say, hey, well, I wonder what they said about this guy and, and what surprised them that I knew exactly was gonna go that way? Uh, I don't think I've ever rewatched, but I, I, there, <laughs> there was one year where like NHL Network the next day yeah. was replaying the draft. And I think, you know, like I, I listened to the commentators and uh, maybe for like two or three rounds, you know, then I got bored. Because it was all, it was, it was, it's, it was it's not exciting yeah. the next day when you know all the picks. It's yeah. to have the picks, that's exciting, yeah. Jerry, amazing insight. It comes from just an incredible place of passion for you. Your heart for this is, you know, is always on display. It's been 10 years in a lot of different roles and uh, and fair to say that it seems like you're, you're truly embracing this current world. I, I think I'm in the perfect spot for what I was meant to do and I do think it's all the different you know roles I've had both with the Sabres and, and coming into this organization before that has you know allowed me to enjoy it as much as I do and we have a great staff like I love all the guys I work with um, all year long we have a lot of fun with it together we challenge each other but we have a lot of fun with it and you know I'm thankful for all of it, really. As I said before, I, I never feel like I'm ever going to work. So. Yeah. Jerry Fortin, Sabres Director of Amateur Scouting. Thanks for being with us on this installment of The Draft Show, presented by Seneca Resorts and Casinos.